Hi and welcome to another Intelligent Auto video. I want to start this video with a, with a thank you. This bright yellow item you see on the screen is a delta sensor. It's a pressure pulse sensor. It will measure differences in pressure changes within any system on the vehicle. It was sent to me by Steve from MA Diagnostics. Um, Steve's actually a I believe an Audi master technician. In his spare time, he makes accessories for oscilloscopes or accessories for technicians. Uh, he very kindly sent me this through the post. Uh, I didn't ask for it. Um, and he asked me to give my thoughts on it. I feel a bit guilty because I've been sitting on it since before Christmas and I've never used it in a video yet. Um, but I've been trying to think of a way to use it where it's not just a blatant plug for the, the item, but also to show you the versatility of using delta sensors, pulse sensors on an engine. So today I'm going to use it on this SEAT um, and I'm going to use it in different applications to show what can be achieved by monitoring pulse sensors from the engine. Also with this video, I'm going to go away from using my Pico scope and I'm going to use it on, on a Bosch scope. The reason why is I want to prove to people, technicians out there, that just because you haven't got a Pico doesn't mean that you can't do the same tests yet was what other techs will do with the Pico. Pico scopes are fantastic bit of kit. It's a very, very, very advanced scope, but there are scopes out there and the one built into the KTS is, it's a decent scope. It has its capabilities. It has its limitations. But I'm going to show today that using this pulse sensor with the Bosch scope, we can get equally good results uh, as we would use in the Pico. I was just going to do a product review on this, um, but unfortunately I was beaten to it. Um, Dave Stirl, if any of you subscribed to his YouTube channel, already done a sort of like a, a, a shootout with this sensor against the Ditex sensor. I use Ditex sensors as well, Ditex pull sensors. Um, but to say he beat me to it anyway. So I thought instead of doing the shootout, let's just use it in some alternative applications. He used it on exhaust pulses. Um, again, I'll put a link to his video in the description. Please go over to Dave's channel and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. He has some great videos out there. See the product review on his channel. First of all, you'll notice the connection to this. It's not the standard BNC connection. It uses four mil bananas. On the other end, it has a standard airline connector. So when you're making attachments up for it, you can use a standard PCL connector to connect it to it. Today, I'm gonna to use a bit of silicon tubing and I'm just gonna push it on the end. So that's my, that's, that's my setup. So I'm gonna attach it to the scope now. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go onto the intake of this engine and have a look at the pressure waveforms within the inlet manifold. Because it's a delta sensor and it's basically a piezo inside this chamber, it doesn't need a chassis ground. So as you can see, I've got the positive channel, the positive side of the scope attached on the yellow lead and I've got the ground to my scope onto the blue lead. As you would do before you would use any measuring device, always do a plausibility check on it. I've never used this sensor before, so I don't know how it reacts. Because it's a pulse sensor, it reacts to increases and decreases in pressure. I need to know that this sensor, when I blow through it, what the voltage is going to do. Now, if it's wired up the correct way, it should go up. Here we go. And there you go, the voltage went up. And if I suck through it, it should go down. 
and there you go the voltage went down now i know that this, the the plausibility of the sensor is good i know it's working uh, i'm now going to put it into the inlet manifold of this engine first things first i'm going to take the intake pipe off the throttle body because that's where i'm going to put the pulse sensor into the actual inlet manifold taking the, the pulse sensor and the end of the pipe I'm just going to push it up past the throttle plate and leave it there in fact I'm going to put it behind that wire so that it kind of holds it in place a bit there we go easy as that to set up so now let's start the engine and see what we get on the screen of the scope There we go, nice clear waveform. When you see the black line going up, it's when the pressure is going positive. And when you see the black line coming down, it's when the pressure is, neg is going negative inside of, the, inside of that inlet manifold. Now what I can do is I can put the second channel of the scope, the red channel, onto an injector. And then what we'll do is we'll then get some kind of reference as to what's going on inside of the inlet manifold. I'm going to use injector one as my reference. Simple back probe. the time base a bit so we can uh, zoom in on the particular event, events. I'll pause this and then switch the engine off. What I'm going to introduce now is a thing called a piston chart. Fire in order for this engine is 1342. 1342. And I've got it synced to injector number one. So I'm going to create a chart. We'll get rid of that. And overlay that. Like I said, we've got sync to injector one. So there's injector one, there's injector one. So this is 720 degrees of crank rotation. The crankshaft's turned twice, the camshafts have turned once, so the engine has gone through a full cycle, all four cylinders have fired. As you can see from the piston chart, different coloured squares, red's power stroke, grey's exhaust stroke, blue's intake, and yellow is compression. Now this is an intake waveform, so what we're interested in is the blue squares. So as you can see where there's a downward pull, it lines up with this blue square here, which tells me that cylinder four is on an intake, which if cylinder one's on a power stroke, it will be on an intake stroke because both pistons will be traveling down the bores. We go on to cylinder two next on its intake, and then onto cylinder one on its intake, and then cylinder three on its intake. Now this engine is running perfectly all right as far as I'm concerned. It's actually one of my own cars. It's my winter hack. Um, but this waveform has actually highlighted something for me. Um, I would expect to see a nice uniformed pull 
right across the four cylinders of the engine. And as you can see, I'm not. I'm getting a stronger pull on four and one than I am on three and two, which could be down to a, a couple of reasons. Um, it could be the volumetric efficiency of the engine on those two cylinders is not as good, so there could be a restriction within the intakes um, ports on those, en on those cylinders. Or it could be the fact that actually cylinders one and four are contributing more to the engine speed than the other two. So the actual pistons are turning faster when it's on a power stroke on one and four. Uh, I'm not concerned about it as I say, the engine is running fine. And I'm sure when we go into the exhaust and also into the dipstick, which I'm going to go on to, um, we'll find that the waveform is perfectly fine. Um, but as I say, wasn't expecting to see that, um, but it is where it is. And as I say, I'm not really concerned that the vehicle is running absolutely fine. Next test I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in to the crankcase via the dipstick. So remove the dipstick and just simply put the pipe into the crankcase. I'm going to put it on the engine because it vibrates and put it over towards the chassis. So we'll start the engine up. Let's have a look at the waveform. And again you can see I've still got the second channel attached to the to the injector for reference and the black channel is the pressure waveform. So again, nice even pulses across the engine. I'm going to drop the time base down. So there's less events, that's better, isn't it? On the screen. And I'll once again pause it. I'm going to switch the engine off now. Once again, taking the piston chart. Just open that up again. Expanded a bit now because we've changed the time base. So again, cylinder one is on its power stroke here. So as the piston's moving down the cylinder, there's pressure starting to rise in the crankcase. So the the, the piston will be at the at the bottom of a, of its stroke there. There's pressure rising. Using injector one as our reference, and we see the nice even pulses within the crankcase, which goes to prove that there's no excessive blow passed by rings. Um, if there was blow passed by rings, what we would start seeing is we would start seeing an anomaly within the, the pressure pulse waveform. The thing is with pressure pulse analysis is what you're looking for, you're looking for the odd man out. Um, you're looking across the 720 degrees of crank rotation, which is basically one cylinder firing to one cylinder firing. The cranks turned twice, the cams have turned once, the engine's gone through a full cycle. And what you're looking for is you're looking for anomalies within the, within the waveform. All engines are going to give you slightly different waveforms depending on how they're made up. They all kind of follow the same pattern should we say but we do see differences across different engines especially on intake and exhaust because of valve timing so again another quick test you can do with a pressure pulse analysis great test for finding if there's a, a blow uh, if there's blow past past a ring the third and final test i want to do today of the most common test to do with a pulse sensor is in the tailpipe so what i've done is you can see the yellow pipe here i've put an extension onto the, the pipe that I've got onto the sensor so I can reach the exhaust and I'm just going to push it into the, the tailpipe of the exhaust like so. Simple as that. What I have done because I'm in the tailpipe of the vehicle the, the, the pressure pulses in the exhaust aren't as aggressive 
as the ones we find in the intake and in the dipstick. So what I've done is I've altered the voltage on channel one to 200 millivolts. I think I had it at 10 volts before. So let's start it up and have a look here. We got the voltage a bit too too low let's try 500 millivolts it's better and again injector one and there's where exhaust waveform i'm going to knock that off let's have a look at it once again bring the piston chart in We'll resize it to suit this particular waveform. So again, synced with injector one. So when injector one's on a power stroke, cylinder two is on an exhaust stroke. Like all pressure pulse analysis, what we're looking for is the odd man out. And as you can see, the waveform itself, move that up, is pretty regular. Nice even pattern. Again, depending on how the the exhaust system set up, depending on how the valve timing is, you're going to get slight variations across engines. I think what I might do now, because I'm in the tailpipe and it's the only measurement I can take if I instigate a misfire that will show an anomaly. But I'm going to unplug an injector and let's have a look at the difference in the waveform with the injector unplugged. The injector is now unplugged. Let's start the scope running and start it up. As you can see, a massive difference in the waveform when we have a misfire. So what I want you to do is, I'm going to put the piston chart up. What I want people to do is put in the comments box which cylinder they think is misfiring. I'm going to pause this now. I'll put the piston chart back up for you. So what I want in the comment box, using that piston chart, I want to know which, which cylinder you think is misfiring. Also as well, for a bonus today, um, I'm going to be giving away one of these pulse sensors. Now they're available in various different colours. And whoever wins it will be able to choose the colour of their choice. And I'll buy one off Stephen and I'll send it directly to you. Now to qualify to win one of these pulse sensors, what I need you to do is, I need you to go over to my YouTube channel. The link is in the, is in the text above this video. And I need you to subscribe to that YouTube channel and also hit the bell for notifications. I'm going to let the the giveaway run for a week and then after a week I'm going to pick one of you at random and it's not just open to new subscriber but it's also going to be open to existing subscribers and I will send you a message asking for your postal address and I will send you one of these pulse sensors in the post. If you want a chance to own one of these pulse sensors please go over to my YouTube channel and subscribe to the channel and you could be the lucky owner of one of these sensors. They retail at about 40 quid, I believe. As I say, I'm not giving this one away. I'm gonna keep this one for myself, but what I'll do is I'll actually buy one off Stephen and I'll get him to post it to the lucky winner. 
So good luck on that one. <laughs>